Senator Al DeCryfe carries a series of bills that would fund various entities in the event of a state government shutdown. Senator Kathy Sharon opposes those bills. She's here now to articulate why. Senator Sharon, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Let's begin with so, uh, Monday night on the Senate floor, Senator DeCryfe, as I stated, he was bringing up a couple of pieces of his legislation, and he said that in one example, a case of licensing electricians, that safety was compromised for political reasons. What do you think should happen in the event of a shutdown, since you do oppose his legislation? Well, uh, I think really the focus should be on preventing a shutdown. My uh, proposals that I've tried to get forward in the legislature are not planning for a shutdown, but are really about doing the activities that we need to do to strengthen our ability in conflict resolution before the end of session and certainly by the end of the fiscal year. How do you propose doing that? Well, I have a, a series of proposals and I'm open to others, but I do want to drive the conversation towards preventing a shutdown rather than planning for a shutdown. And some suggestions that I've made in the legislation that I've uh, introduced is to require that in the conference committees that there be at least one member of the conference committee from the minority party. So no matter who's in the majority, there would always at least be one member of the minority party. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember, but last year, the egg bill is the bill that was resolved in conference committee between the House and the Senate. It had both Republicans and Democrats on the conference committee, and that was the one bill that did not get vetoed by the governor. In the other bills, and the other bills that were conferenced, there were no Democrats allowed to participate. And what that does is that it stops the majority from understanding, especially if the governor is from the minority party of senators, uh, to understand how they can move their language, how they can maybe soften some consequence in their legislation to be successful at getting a governor's signature. So having somebody on that conference committee that can bring that voice of what you need to change in this in order to be successful to get a governor's signature is important. The second thing that I propose is that if you get to the end of the session and you haven't got a bill passed uh, and signed by the governor, there's a period of time between the end of session and the end of the fiscal year or the shutdown date. During that time, I suggest, as the governor did last year, that we bring in a mediator and that the mediator work with both the majority and the minority to help resolve differences in a way that will be successful at getting a governor's signature. And then the third piece of the bill is to say that the legislators will have their salaries suspended uh, from the point of the shutdown until the resolution occurs. Now these are suggestions. I'm certainly willing to add or detract from those, but the point of it is that it focuses on avoiding a shutdown by increasing those things that we can do to place pressure on ourselves and increase our capacity for conflict resolution. What kind of reception have you had to those proposals? Well, in my caucus, the reception is very positive. The uh, Democrats really believe that what the public has said to us is get your work done on time. The concept of planning for a shutdown or anticipating a shutdown or counting on a shutdown is not in keeping with the public's frustration with the legislature, and I agree with them. So our caucus is very supportive of that. Uh, we've put in a request for a hearing. Uh, as of yet, we haven't uh, been successful in getting that scheduled by the uh, chair, Republican chair of the committee. You brought up a bit earlier the word consequences, and something that you had stated Monday night on the Senate floor was that by having these bills, you're essentially taking away any of the consequences of a shutdown. Why do you think those consequences are so important? Well, uh, just as this is the case for a student going to school who doesn't get a paper in on time, there will be a consequence that helps the student meet the deadline, get the work done. If uh, the world knows that boundaries and timelines all uh, accumulate pressure within the person to accomplish task completion. Uh, what the proposals that might be called lights on bills or bills that uh, provide for spending after a shutdown do is reduce the, uh, the negative impact of the legislature's ineffectiveness at getting their job done on time. Uh, and, but it also has a, another effect and that is it establishes spending and discourages. It doesn't only uh, allow for a, an expenditure to occur and reduce consequences. It really reduces 
the uh, emphasis on conflict resolution before a shutdown. It creates a gridlock. There's a motivation to not resolve differences because there is a sense that, well, if we don't resolve our differences, things will continue to move on fairly comfortably. And to that point, Senator DeCroix has stated that essentially, a, if you close things down, if you allow things to shut down like state parks, you're just punishing the people of Minnesota. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely not. In the sense that, in this sense, I would not agree with it. That uh, that he's splitting off, that is that that particular shutdown is the thing that creates consequences in our constituencies' lives. Everything we do up here, everything, every law we pass, every activity we take is representative and has an impact on the lives of the people that we represent. All of the budgetary cuts that were proposed by the Republican majority last year and those that were supported in the final budget because of the failure to negotiate a different outcome has a negative consequence on a lot of people in this state. Kids' tuitions is going up. People who have disability services are, are struggling to be able to stay in their homes in their community. PCA services have been reduced for family members, their ability to be able to take care of their family member. Uh, uh, there haven't been cost of living increases for the wages of people who work in nursing homes. Uh, the payment rates to our health care providers have been going down, down, down. So, and that's all before the end of the session. So the notion that somehow the shutdown starts some negative consequences is really disingenuous. Every action we take has either positive or negative consequences on the public and it starts the very day we begin the session and continues as we continue to pass laws affecting the lives of the people of the state. We should be very concerned about the fact that as representatives we have the capacity to either enhance or diminish the lives of the people in this state. I'm not disagreeing that that's an important factor, but it is the basic reason why we should get our work done on time. I do have one last question. We're almost out of time. Senator, if any of these bills were to address medical safety issues, such as keeping nursing homes funded, et cetera, operational during a shutdown, would you support those? Well, uh, I would support legislation during the session that would support our nursing homes, that would raise some of their rates so that they can play their employees decently. You know, the sudden interest in doing something after a shutdown is, is very odd to me. Why isn't that their same interest in resolving these concerns about the public before the shutdown? What I'm about is doing those things that will help us resolve our conflicts and not experience a shutdown, rather than doing what these proposals are doing, which is assuming there will be a shutdown, planning for that shutdown, and establishing a situation in which it discourages decision making during the session because the legislators know that they've diminished the consequences of being unable to come to a resolution. Okay, with that thought, Senator Kathy Sharon, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you. Thank you for a chance to talk about this.